To start our series on flying an approach, we're going to have a little bit of an overview of how to read an approach plate. Not a lot of detail here, just some general information. At the top of every approach plate is the header section. Get some good information here, the uh, appropriate frequency for the localizer, runway length, uh, altitude of the airport, and so on. The approach plan view shown in pink. This is uh, looking sort of a top-down view. Gives you your key waypoints and other reference points. The overall approach itself. Any associated uh, navigational facilities or other reference points and obstructions when appropriate. One key thing you will find uh, very helpful is the minimum safe altitude circle. Here happens to be divided exactly into north and south halves. Minimum safe from arriving from the south, 2,900 feet, flying over the tall buildings. Arriving from the north, only 2,100 feet, since Space Mountain's a long way away. You'll also see little inserts giving you extra information in the plan view here, an alternate missed approach. The gray area shows an overall uh, layout of the airport. All the runways shown with their length and width. Symbols for lighting and also symbols for obstruction and at the bottom a table to help you determine your time to the final approach fix based on your ground speed. The yellow area here is the profile view. It gives you uh, the key reference points and key altitudes. In this case uh, the line underneath an altitude indicates that you cannot be below that altitude at that point but you can go above it. Think about it. The line is a floor. You can't go below the floor but you can go above it. You're maintaining 3,000 feet until you're at Copra where you begin your descent. The section below the profile itself is the table for minima based on category of the aircraft and shows the minimums for the type of approach here a straight in ILS or a straight in localizer with the minimum altitude and minimum runway visual range 5,000 feet or approximately one mile in this case one statute mile. So we'll take a look at the ILS or localizer approach for runway 34 at Richmond International fairly simple approach. We have an initial approach fix at JovPo and from JovPo we'd simply fly straight in to uh, the runway. We must be at or above 1700 feet at JovPo and maintain that altitude until we are at the final approach fix, Kafka, that's indicated by the sort of X marks the spot, large X, that's on the profile view. Notice here we have two inserts, information on the standard approach fix, as well as an alternate. And you can see information given on how to fly the missed approach, maintain the runway heading until 800 feet, turn to the Richmond 018 radial, and climb and maintain 2000, and arrive at the Epix intersection. From there you would be cleared back to an another point to begin your approach again. Also depicted here is the localizer on a marker, uh, Kafka, at Kafka, and also there's a, a symbol for the middle marker. Here we have the minimum safe altitude circle, and this one coincidentally happens to be divided exactly into east and west halves, 2,600 feet if arriving from the west. And this applies for a 25 nautical mile radius around the Richmond VOR. You can see it says MSA RIC 25 NM above the circle. Here's the ILS or localizer approach to runway 16 right at Denver International much more information than the one we just looked at for Richmond. And just to uh, make a comment, I hear sometimes in sim flying folks ask what's a good altitude to be at when uh, you intercept a localizer. The answer is often 3,000 feet and it's obvious that that wouldn't work here at Denver since the airport elevation itself is a greater than 5,400 feet. And you can get the exact elevation off the chart at the top. Notice here there's a line below and a line above the number 10,000. This means that at this point, shred, you are 
required to be at 10,000 feet. We mentioned think of the line below as a floor, you can't go below it. Think of the line above as a ceiling, you can't go above it. And if you have a line both below and above the number, you must be exactly at that altitude. The other points show uh, altitudes 9,000, 8,000, which you could be at or above. On this approach plate, the profile view does not give the initial approach fixes, uh, just some key points along the way, but instead is an part of the insert. It gives you the routing to uh, shred, the intersection shred. You can see we have uh, three initial approach fixes here. Each one has a required altitude and a required speed. The speed with the line above and below means you must be at exactly 210 knots. And if you're arriving at the Kipper waypoint, you can see the required altitude is 12,000 feet, the line below and above it. Note in this case that radar or GPS is required. This is indicated on the chart and also on the profile view where you must maintain radar contact. Here we have the ILS or localizer DME approach to runway 13 left at Chico Municipal. This is actually a fun little approach to fly. Note here that you should be at or above 3100 feet when beginning the actual approach. If you're crossing Nord outbound to make the procedure turn, you must be at or above 3600 feet. But if you pick 3100 feet to come down to, you might have a little bit of a problem. If you're arriving from the southwest, minimum safe is 2,600 feet. But if you're arriving from the northeast, minimum safe is 8,300 feet. And that's because you'll notice here there's a little bit of an obstruction. Here this is in color. This is the new format for approach plates. If you don't see this on all of them, they are being changed progressively. So if you're arriving from the northeast and you decide on a target altitude of something in the 3,000s, to make your landing here at Chico uh, and uh, maybe uh, then a trip up to Black Mountain Lookout. Instead you might find yourself saying Black Mountain Lookout because minimum safe 8300 feet you can see the uh, altitudes of the in various points marked on the map up in the colored area uh, the highest being 7087 feet in the upper right hand corner. You can also use the Red Bluff VOR as the initial approach fix. This would be a convenient thing if you were coming from the west to the southwest. You'd fly along the 105 degree radial at, at or above 3,000 feet and note it says no PT. That means no procedure turn. Not only do you not have to do the procedure turn, you're not allowed to do the procedure turn. You would then intercept the localizer and fly inbound and make your landing. There's also an initial approach fix at Nord shown here and this would be used typically if you were arriving from the southeast or the easter, a more easterly direction and note that you must be at or above 3600 feet flying outbound to your procedure turn. We'll give a little bit more information in a separate video on procedure turns themselves. So if arriving from the south or east, you might overfly the Chico VOR or intercept the localizer outbound, fly your procedure turn, come back around, intercept the localizer again, and complete your landing. So earlier we mentioned the Red Bluff VOR as an initial approach fix, but what if you were arriving from, say, the southwest or a somewhat more westerly direction? but you didn't necessarily want to fly all the way up to the Red Bluff uh, VOR as an initial approach fix. Could you not intercept the Red Bluff uh, 105 radial somewhere past the Red Bluff VOR and then intercepting the localizer or possibly even flying directly to Zotway intercepting the localizer and flying inbound from there? Well I believe actually that this would be a legal approach to do either uh, a little bit of a little piece of the Red Bluff uh, 105 radial or go directly to Zotway. And there are three ways to enter an approach. Obviously if you're under radar control from ATC, uh, radar vectors and they'll put you where they want you. 
at any time it is legal to uh, arrive at an approach at the initial approach fix that works for any published approach but there's a third way you can start your approach at an intermediate fix this is a relatively new rule change since 2006 and I think a good one uh, clarified a lot of things and answered a lot of questions including the one we had do we need to go all the way to the red bluff VOR to start our approach I don't think we do but some restrictions may apply and even if you're not under radar control you can ask ATC to verify that you are cleared to the an intermediate fix as your initial approach fix. Here's a uh, typical RNAV GPS approach. This is one that could be flown with equipment, the standard equipment that's in FSX. Um, you may have an add-on that has more precise equipment, but this would be a standard GPS approach. S same kind of information as on uh, any other approach chart and you see here the minimum safe altitude not an issue we have uh, a initial approach fix Maddox which is a traditional intersection and FEMAP which is a virtual waypoint shown by that uh, little star like symbol and an intermediate fix CASI not to be confused with the DJ CASI this is CASI so if you arrive at one of the initial approach fixes uh, in this case you would fly at or above 2,000 feet to Cassie and you would then make your inbound turn towards Jesty, which is the final approach fix and proceed in and complete your landing. Note the uh, minimum altitude at or above 2,000 feet at, at Cassie but note that uh, based on the minimum safe altitude circle within 25 nautical miles of runway 2 in this case uh, you must maintain altitude at or above 2600 feet until you at least get to one of the initial approach fixes and we'll look at one more approach the RNAV RNPZ to runway 21 at Albuquerque Sunport RNP meaning required navigational performance. This is a requirement for a more precise GPS than the standard GPS. And it's probably pretty evident why this approach requires a little bit more precision. Uh, very complex approach as approaches go. Very tight turn and there is a little bit of an obstruction off to the east that I'm sure you noticed. The intermediate fix TACO and the initial approach fix PIA, not PILA, I'll explain that in a minute. I believe the intermediate fix could, could also be requested as an initial approach fix. Uh, notice here we have a requirement to be exactly 10,000 feet, line below and line above the 10,000. And there is a speed limit here, not a precise speed limit, but not to exceed 210 knots. And note here, the required navigational performance of your equipment is tolerance within three-tenths of a nautical mile, likewise at PIA. And uh, th this intersection, PIA, is pronounced that way. The intersection just prior to this is SOPA. If you find yourself in New Mexico, uh, make sure you have one. It's a wonderful treat. Exactly 10,000 feet at PIA, maximum speed 210 knots fly inbound in this general direction. Note the minimum safe altitude all around the runway 21 area is 12,000 feet. So you cannot go below that until at least arriving at the initial approach fix PIA or an assigned intermediate fix which may act as an initial approach fix such as Wilkie uh, or even Romero. So you see here you would fly uh, inbound and make a fairly tight turn through several waypoints and keeping an eye on the Sandia Mountains to your east. Very lovely. We wouldn't want you to spoil the landscape by running into them there. And the charts we use here are from skyvector.com. It's a very nice source. Uh, unfortunately they only provide uh, all the detailed charts for U.S. airports. But you can search by ICA code or name. 
Uh, Non-U.S. airports, they do give some basic information on runways and so on, but no charts. You can see there's several things that you can uh, get here, and overall information of the airport with a diagram. There's VFR charts, a sectional, and also IFR charts. Information on each runway, you can see in some detail for each one, including uh, length, width, magnetic headings, and so on. And if you scroll all the way down towards the bottom, you'll see the various chart sections. You know, ILS and RNAV charts, VOR approaches, visual approaches, and so on, whatever's available. And in addition to that, you have STARS, the standard terminal arrival charts, and the departure procedure charts, the SIDS. There are other sources, but skyvector.com is a nice one, and we wanted to give them a little kudos for letting us use them. So come see us at ElitePremierVirtual.com. If you register on the website, you'll have access to several different things, including some flight training information. These are written documents uh, that cover in some detail various subjects, as you can see here. ATC communication, IFR flight planning, and so on. Included in this group is a document on reading approach plates, which covers additional information than what we presented here. So come visit us and register on the website for access.